guys and welcome to another quick technical Wednesday rundown here on the Kiki and Manny Photography blog. My name is Manny and today I want to show you guys a quick technique that I use to import my images from my camera directly onto my hard drive via using a quick shortcut. So what I noticed is that most photographers come back home after shooting, take the SD card or compact flash, pop that into your card reader and directly copy the whole folder with all images onto your desktop or take the folder and copy it into a location on your hard drive where you want to save that. Yes, that technique, I used to do that technique as well, but I just find that afterwards your images are all just in a big mess. Uh, the numbering system is still on the numbering system that you had in your camera. The meter data is the way you have it in your camera. Plus you imported all images that are black or where the exposure is wrong. And it takes a little bit of time to import those. The importing doesn't take so much time. But afterwards the sorting and getting your stuff right, that does take a little bit of time. So with this technique today that I want to show you is just a quicker way of importing it. And while it's importing you don't have to do anything to import it it's just doing it automatically and you can surf the web or go and head on your emails or drink a coffee or whatever so let me quickly show you guys how I do this so the first thing that I'm doing now is take the SD card or compact flash card pop that into the card reader and plug it in okay as you guys notice now Adobe Bridge is starting up to boot and photo downloader is also booting up we'll just give those two programs a bit of a few seconds there you notice it, photo downloader has also started and is up as well. Got a nice big window in front of us with all the options. If you're the first time on this, it will most probably look like this. You will have the standard dialog. So what you will have to do is go down here and say advanced dialog. And you can pretty much in here take change all options and do whatever you like to change while importing. So the first thing I will have to do is go to get photos from. You have to select the card that you just imported or just plugged in actually. So on my case it's the D3X now. I'm going to select D3X and it directly shows me you've got 9 files displayed, 9 selected, 182.60 megabytes and the date of shooting. That's not so important now for me. Maybe just the megabytes so I know how much space I need. Then I've got all my photos down here. And I've got two options, check all and uncheck all. This means if I select uncheck all, all the ticks will be away and you have selected no images for importing. So check all again and you will have all images. As you guys noticed there already, there's a blue uh, frame going around your image. This means you have selected this image right now or this one or maybe this one or this one. As you guys also notice, I do have three black images down here that I don't want to import. Like I said earlier, if your exposure went completely wrong on shooting or something, these are the three main issues you don't want to import. Okay, so what you can do is click into the middle of the room or window and just drag with your mouse over it and you select all of these images. Then just untick and all of these images are unticked. Unticked, sorry. So if you have like hundred or twenty of these images just drag over there with the mouse uncheck them and you've unchecked all of them okay that's one option to do that then on the side here you've got safe options and in safe options the first thing you want to check is the location where do you want to save that to I'll go to say choose here say choose and in choose I normally have a folder on my computer called work down here if I select work I've got a folder in there called shootings and in these shootings all of my shootings that I did or that I ever do are going into there so I have a main folder this shooting folder and in there subfolders with all the images so I'm gonna select shootings and say choose so this all of these images are just going to be imported into shootings then in shootings I want a subfolder saying Cape Town because I just took a few shots of Cape Town. So what I'll say down here is create subfolder and say a custom name. Yes. If you don't want a custom name or if you don't want a subfolder just choose none. If you like to have show date or show time then you can change that as well. I'm going to say custom name for now and in custom name I want to rename that to say Cape Town because I took a photo of Cape Town or a few photos. Then folder is renamed to Cape Town, say maybe Cape Town shooting, whatever you did. Alright, then rename files. This means you're actually renaming the files, each file on its own. 
so you don't have to sit afterwards and rename this stuff or do it in bridge again you can directly via, via importing it directly do it then so what you can do here is say custom name again or if you want to choose date and time or shoot date whatever there's a few options custom name and shoot and date or advanced rename there's so much you can do in here just have a look I mostly take custom name and just select whatever it was say for instance now Cape Town as well I want to rename that to Cape Town written together and at the bottom here you directly see an example Cape Town plus the number and it's a NIF still a raw file so I don't want to have it to 2861 I want to change it to, to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 because it's just 6 shots so I know it's 1 to 6 so what I'll do is just say 0, 0, 0, 1 for the first one right so I've got 0, 0, 1 but NIF for my raw then the next option that we have down here is preserve current file name in XMP this means you are going to save all the metadata all the exposures, the apertures, everything, all the metadata, the writes, everything that is processed or that you entered into your camera will be saved with your file together. So this is very important for me to check this stuff off. It always important. Then you've got some advanced options down here. Open in Adobe Bridge directly after importing if you want to. No, I'm going to tick that off. I never do that. Convert to DMDNG. Never do that. I did that earlier, but nah, I never use that anymore. Then delete original files if you want to on your camera. If you tick that off, it will delete all the original images on your camera card, on that CF card or Compact Flash card or SD card, whatever you plugged in, it will delete all these images on there. So if you want to delete them, tick that. Save copies, this is for another backup, so if you have, say, a, another hard drive to your computer or yeah, wherever standing, and you want to just backup all of these images to your hard drive, just select that, choose your destination where you want to back it up to, and you don't need to afterwards copy it again or anything. It, it will be backed up directly. This is so, so awesome. I use it all the time, but for the tutorial sakes, I won't use it now, so I'm going to untick that again. Then down here, this is also super important for me, apply metadata. You just have a basic option starter now, basic metadata option, yes, I'm selecting that. And the creator, you can put whatever your photography name or your real name, whatever suits you. I'm going to put my real name in there. Okay, type that, Manfred Werner. Then copyright, I want to put my photography business name in there. Sorry, Manny Photography. And I'm done. Now what I can do is just say get photos, select get photos here and it will import all of those images. So say you've got a hundred images or two hundred or even say four hundred images from a wedding or something. When you say get photos, all these photos will be imported. The backup will be there. The XMP files uh, data will be there. Everything will be done for you. You don't have to do anything. Just these few small steps down here. And then while, while it's importing, you can just have a coffee or whatever. Surf the webs, check your emails, whatever. So if I say get photos now, it will directly start copying all of these photos. And while it's busy, I can go into the web, do whatever. So this is just a super quick way for me to get these images onto my new folders and I use it all the time. So to activate all of this you will just have to go to your bridge, select bridge and in bridge go to Adobe bridge here at the top, select preferences, select that and a new window will come up. So now you in preferences select general, tick that and in here under behaviors tick this box. When a camera is connected, launch Adobe Photo Downloader. This means directly when you connect your camera or connect a SD card or a FCF card directly, Bridge will start up booting and Adobe Downloader or this, yeah, Adobe Photo Downloader and you are good to go. So then it's the quickest and easiest way to do this. So all you will have to do is tick off this box and say OK and you're good to go. So this is a quick way of how I import all my images from my camera or from the SD or CF card directly to my hard drive. I hope this tutorial helped you guys a bit and I hope to see you guys on the next Wednesday Technical Rundown. My name is Manny, thanks for watching and bye bye.